welcome. My name is Tyrion Lannister. So today I wanted to make a tier list of the troop appearances. And before I go to my tier list, I want to quickly explain what the troop appearances are and what they mean. So the first thing to understand, and this is the most important thing to realize about troop appearances, is that they are permanent stats. It says right here, unlock a troop appearance to obtain a permanent stat bonus. Parentheses, always active. This is huge. This means that when you unlock a new troop appearance, you always get that stat. You don't have to have that appearance activated. You don't even have to be using that troop type. You automatically get the stats. This makes troop appearances a really, really important stat. And importantly, one that isn't always really obviously recognizable by someone's account until you really go in and take a look at it. Now, there is the ability to, quote unquote, use a certain skin. Um, you can equip it. This really changes nothing except for the actual appearance of it. So just choose ones that you think look nice and look cool. But that's not making any change to your actual stats. Now, there are three different tiers to your troops. You have your A tier, your S tier, and your SS tier, with the SS tier obviously being the best, then the S, and then the A tier. I'm going to be today diving into the A troops and explaining my tier list for them. Now, please recognize that I have some of them leveled up much higher than others. That is based on, first of all, my account. Second of all, based on the fact that some of them are easier to obtain than others, based on, like for example, the Old Town Bowman, they're really easy to obtain through the elite rebel groups. That doesn't necessarily mean that just because I have them to legendary makes them better. So I'll be getting into that in a moment, but I also wanted to just note that the different categories, again, A, S, and SS, I'll be doing a separate tier list for each of them. This one is just going to be the A list. All right, so let's begin our tier list. I wanna begin with our lowest level, and that would be the D tier. I think that the D tier starts out where most of you could probably have guessed, and that is with the one that everyone has to gold, but nobody wants it, the Old Town Bowman. The Old Town Bowmen are, of course, available through the Elite Rebel groups. Um, they're something that probably pretty much everyone has maxed just because of how easy it is to get them, but they're not giving you a whole ton of stats. To give the quick rundown, at Gray, they give Fortification Attack, then Fortification Defense, then Bow Attack, then Hospital Speed, then Hospital Capacity. As you can see, none of these are really helpful troop stats. Maybe if you were a Bow Trap Castle, you want that Bow Attack. And I'm not saying the hospital speed and hospital capacity isn't worth anything, but it's really not giving you much help in the combat area. So I did place it in the D category, but I admit that if you were really hard caring about that hospital capacity and speed, um, maybe you would want it a little bit more important. But I, I think that for the most part, most would agree that this is really in the lowest tier. So moving one up from that though, I'm gonna move to the C tier next. And the first one I'm gonna put here is our Botley Bowman. Now the Botley Bowman was available through the old uh, Westeros Pass or now turned Recruitment Pass. You can still buy it in that shop. And this is a pretty good skin. Um, starting in gray again, you get the Bowman Attack. Then moving down, you get Fortification Capacity, Siege Attack Reduction, then Fortifications Attack, and then Enemy Attack Reduction. I think that the reductions that this give are the best things about it. You get a total of 10% if you get it all the way to legendary or all the way to full max gold. And that's pretty good. I mean, 10% um, you know, enemy attack reduction is great. Um, technically, 6% of it is re actual reduction. 4% is a siege attack reduction, which only applies when you are actually getting hit. But I still think that this is a pretty decent one. That's why I put it in the C category. But because it's not giving any troop-specific benefits to you, I'm not going to put it any higher. Uh, along that same line, I'm going to add the Riverlands Bandit here. The Riverlands Bandit is available through the Elite, uh, sorry, through the Elite Trials shop. So you can buy that for 250 of those tokens. Um, I think the Riverlands Bandit is kind of a very similar vein to the Botley Bowman, where it gives a lot of reductions. So just to start out again, uh, we get Bow Attack, then Siege Attack Reduction, then Bow Attack again, then Hospital Capacity, and then an all rallied troops health uh, increase at the legendary level. Again, um, because this isn't giving any troop specific stats, I find it less helpful, 
That being said, for sure, if you are designing a bow trap castle, the Riverlands Bandit is probably the most important of these. You get hospital capacity, you're getting lots of bow attack, you're getting lots of siege attack reduction, you're getting health. That is great. I think if you're a bow attack castle, then this might be, or sorry, if you're a bow trap castle, this is probably S tier for you. But for everyone else that doesn't use bowmen, pretty not as good. So I'm going to put it lower in the C category. Again, it is available in the Elite Trials shop, or as all of them are available through the S Troop Medals, I wouldn't recommend using it on either the C or the D category, and I'll explain where I would recommend using it later. So moving to our B category, we have the Furious Small Folk. Now, the Furious Small Folk are an interesting one to me. I think that they are, are, are pretty strong for infantry castles. They're the only infantry A troop skin. Um, but starting out again, they give infantry attack, then infantry health, then infantry defense, and then another infantry defense, and they round out with resource protection of 10%. Now, I really want to be clear, I only have this to gray because the only way to get it um, is either the A troop medals or through the navigator shop. And I think that considering how much it costs in the navigator shop, you're just much better off buying the, the pure badges. That's going to be a much bigger stat buff for you than the Furious Small Folk. Um, so for me, I, I've been going with those badges because I like being able to control what I'm getting from it. Um, but if you if you wanted to go the Small Folk route, you certainly could. Um, these are really good in stats. I think that the problem for me is that it gives the attack first. So you only get 4% inf attack. And once you've gotten that, I think that the benefits to it drop off a lot. The rest of the way is just health and then defense. If you are an inf front castle, then that health and defense is definitely good. But everyone knows that attack is the most important stat in the game. And the fact that it's giving you so little attack right off the bat is, is going to make it tough, in my opinion. Um, so the next category is going to be A. I'm going to move right up to A category. And I'm going to do the first one here is the Dornish Spearman. This was a pretty new um, A tier skin that got released um, that is, is pretty good. It's giving spear health first, then spear defense, then all rallied troops defense, then training speed, and then finally spear attack. Um, I love the fact that it gives the spear attack at the end because it actually gives you a pretty substantial amount. It gives you a total of 10% spear attack. Now, the main drawback with the Dornish Spearman is that unfortunately you can only get it by redeeming the A troop medals. That makes the Dornish Spearman a high priority one to use those, those medals on because that's the only way you can actually really improve it. I do think that it's very, very strong. The fact that it gives that 10% sphere attack is great. The fact that you get all rally troops defense increased is great. I think that the biggest drawback for me is the fact that at the purple tier, you're getting training speed, which Training speed is just not worth a whole lot, in my opinion. Um, there's other ways to get a lot more, for example, building an extra mint. Um, so I don't see the Dornish Spearman being um, quite the S tier, but it's definitely, definitely very, very strong. Um, and just because that, that purple right before the spear attack makes it frustrating because you kind of have to sink the extra purple tier just to get to that gold tier so you can get the spear attack. Um, but moving to our other things in the in the A tier. I'm going to next move to the Northern Cavalry. The Northern Cavalry are, are really, really strong. They were available through the recruitment in the recruitment pass or the old Westeros pass, um, and they're still available in that shop. Now, the Northern Cavalry first gives cavalry health, then cavalry attack, then rally march speed, then cavalry defense, and then finally, all rally troops health. I think that, again, this is a really strong one. To me, Cavalry Health, all of the different tiers that it gives are all really good in their own way. The Rally March Speed maybe isn't helpful if you're not a Rally Leader, but Cavalry Health, Attack and Defense, and then Rally, All Rally Troops Health is definitely all really good stats, good at every tier. I wish, again, the attack were later on so I get more stats out of it, but 6% is what you get at the, uh, the green level. It's pretty good, so definitely Northern Cavalry is solid. But again, I think it's just missing sort of the overlap of getting those later on attack stats with all the rest of the stats being good. So our final A tier category is going to be the Runaway Horseman. 
Um, the Runaway Horseman is the other one in accompaniment with the Dornish Spearman that is only available by redeeming A Troop medals. So to be very clear, I recommend using your A Troop medals on the Dornish Spearman, or sorry, on the Dornish Spearman and the Runaway Horseman. Those are the two that that's the only way you can get them. Now the Runaway Horseman starts by giving you 10% marching speed. I think that's actually really helpful. Um, whether you're racing to castles in, in Alliance Conquest or anything else you're doing, marching speed is actually great. And 10% is, is not nothing. Next you get Cavalry Health, then Cavalry Defense, then Cavalry Health again, and then finally Cavalry Attack. Now, I think that makes this a really, really premium one. And I will be honest when I say that I was very tempted to place this in the S category. I think that the reason why I didn't put it in the S category is because A, it's very hard to achieve these. I do think this is, by the way, the closest I would have to the S category. And I'm on the fringe. I'm kind of debating it. I think that it's probably a little bit better than these other two. But I'm held back, and, and I'll explain why. To me, going through four tiers without any attack stats or any all troop stats makes it tough. There aren't a lot of people that are cavalry front, so all those health and defense stats are not super, super meaningful. The marching speed is good, and then obviously the attack at the end is great, but um, it's, it's you're going through a lot just to get there. And again, the only way to get it is through A troop medals. And A troop medals are actually in many ways harder to get than S troop medals. S troop medals are practically a dime a dozen. You can find them all the time. A troop medals, on the other hand, are really hard to find. So as such, I, I have my, rep, my reservations about anything where that's the only way to get them. But I will admit that if there was something to be added to my S tier, I'm tempted to make it my runaway cavalry. But that does leave us with the last, and that is the House Reed Spearmen. The House Reed Spearmen were also available through the recruitment pass, and I think these are fantastic to get to purple. Um, I think this is an S tier up until the purple category. Starting at gray, they give 4% spear attack, then spear health, then spear defense, and then at purple, they give 10% spear attack. So by having a purple uh, house read spearman, you're getting 14% spear attack, 6% spear health, and 8% spear defense. That is pure stats that are going to be helpful, that are fantastic. Love it. They were also easy to get by using the recruitment pass. You can buy them in that shop still. That makes them great. Definitely worth a buy up until purple. Because unfortunately, at the gold tier for the House Reed Spearman, you get army carrying capacity. And I don't think that that's very good. Not super helpful. Um, probably not going to make much of a difference to your actual stats. So what I would say for the most part is with the recruitment pass, I would get my House Reed Spearman up to purple. Then I would focus on the, the Northern Cavalry, getting that to gold and getting that as high as possible. And once you've done both of those, then you can go to the Bali Bowman, which is the last one. But there's so many other good things to spend in that shop. I probably wouldn't do it beyond these two. Um, the Bali Bowman, I don't really think is, is quite worth it. Um, all of my A Troop medals, I would pour into the Runaway Cavalry or the Dornish Spearman. And probably really depends on just which type of uh, troop you look for. I think I'm really thinking about this. I think just to be fair, I'm going to put the Runaway Cavalry in the S tier. I do think it is really, really good and really strong. I kind of explained some of my reservations about it, but I'm going to leave it there just because I do think it is really good. And I kind of think it balances it nicely, having one spear in each and one cavalry in each. Um, again, the infantry, it's just they don't have as many others. I expect that they're missing another infantry uh, appearance. If I had to guess, that's going to be the next one they're going to introduce, so I'd be on the lookout for that. Because to be fair, they have three bows, two cavalry, two spear, and only one infantry. So you got to expect they're going to do some more. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. I'm going to do another one for the S troops and then the SS troops. But I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know if there are other videos you'd like to see. But until next time, my name is Tyrion Lannister. Have a great rest of your day, guys, and I'll see you next time.